Hey guys, welcome back to Angie Plans. Today's video is a very exciting um, addition. <laughs> it's silly, but um, I just hit 2,000 subscribers, which is a s minuscule number compared to all the other channels that I typically watch. But uh, it's been a long time coming. It's been a while since I hit the last milestone. Um, so I wanted to do something fun for 2,000 subscribers. Welcome. Before we get started, go ahead and join the fun. If you are not subscribed yet, you can be my 2,001st subscriber. Um, today we're going to be counting down and reacting <laughs> to my five most popular uploads of all time. Um, I've been making videos since 2016, I think. Um, maybe 27, I think 2016 was my first planner video, uh, near the end of the year. So it's been a while and, um, we've gotten some hits, some misses, a lot of misses. And, uh, we're just going to show you the, the five most popular, cause it's interesting that they have pretty much con stayed consistent for the last while. So let's get into it. Counting down number five. This is DIY baby crinkle book. You can see um, it's gotten, it started, it started out slow and then it kind of picked up in 2020. I guess a lot of people were doing some crafting when they were stuck at home and it's maintained itself pretty well since then. It's around 2020, it started to show up on my like top videos of the month, like every month. Um, and so there you go. It has earned me 63 subscribers and about $43. Uh, let's go ahead and watch it. It's been a while since I've seen this one. This is the one with the old intro. So if you haven't been around for a while, I used to be called Genji MH because MH is short for My Hogwarts, and I started making videos just for my friends on MyHogwarts.com, um, and that's they knew me as Genji. And uh, the underscore MH was because I think Genji was taken or something. Um, I eventually changed it to plans. And um, if you listen carefully, each of those three keystrokes for the underscore MH all still exist in my current intro. Uh, there you go. Hey there, guys. I had a little bit of fun and I made a crunch. <laughs> do you hear that background music? I don't do that a lot very often anymore. Um, it's a little bit. I think it's going to start getting annoying. Uh, Baby Crinkle Book. I still have both this one and the one I make in the video. Book for my daughter. And today I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is a Transformers one and I'm going to make a Marvel one. I definitely should have done a VO for that because <laughs> uh, the crinkle is, it's quite of a lot. I still own that shirt. Of course, I start by ironing the fabric. I'm making the book five by five. So I cut out this template. Um, can you hear there's like two different sources of audio? I don't know why. <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't know if I would do it any better today because I just uploaded something with terrible audio like last week and couldn't be bothered to fix it. This definitely could have been sped up a lot faster. <laughs> Probably don't need to show every single step of this also. <laughs> Especially the rotary cutter doesn't work. I could have just cut that out, like skipped it. <laughs> and there's the cover and we'll be doing this with each of the pages. So we've cut eight squares here. Um, the way we're assembling this, just realize both of those, like all of those rings don't fit me anymore. Well, the, the one on my right hand broke. The one on the left hand doesn't fit anymore. I finally got my wedding ring off and um, people have just been taking my word for it that I'm married uh, ever since then um, because I don't want to put it back on because it doesn't fit. <laughs> I need to fix that. This, if you see, is basically we have two sets of pages. There's going to be six pages on the inside plus two covers. So that makes eight squares total and you see that it's two pieces that are then sewn together. You know, I think I actually did a pretty good job of like explaining what I was doing here. And maybe that's why I get so many views because like it's actually useful. And if you're going to do it, you might as well pull up the video a second time, right? Then you don't Thor. need my talking to myself thought process for this then much. Hulk. This video is seven minutes long. It probably could have been like then one. <laughs> Wolverine, then Spider-Man. But that's just me yeah. speaking from a uh, post TikTok era. So when you flip through it, it will look like this. Oh gosh, no, we get it. We get it, Rebecca. Like this. Da, 
them. And okay. So oh, we and have the, to the divide this in half. Again. The middle spread will be <laughs> these ones. See? So when it's completely open, it'll look like this. Yeah, again, it's painstaking and dull, but this is useful. Like if I were following this tutorial. Right, so I'm gonna actually pin it right now. In the first book I made, I used a recycled chip bag for the inside. Here I have a piece of cellophane gift wrap that we had lying around. You can use whatever you've got. I got a comment um, on this video that this chip bag is probably a better idea because it's actually manufactured to like food grade standards, whereas the cellophane wouldn't be. Um, the other sneaky secret that I've never told anybody who watched this video is that this one with the cellophane in it, um, it the edges didn't catch, and so it like got all the way around, and so it kind of has bunched up in the inside. Um, the one with the chip bag is a louder crinkle, um, which I don't really prefer, but it definitely has held up a little bit better, so I would recommend the chip bag uh, for both of those reasons. Just insert it inside the pages. So go ahead and give it a shot and uh, comment below, send me a link to a picture if you make it yourself and let me know what you thought. Nobody ever sent me a picture. Um, this is my old intro. I finally, finally popped something here. Yep, there you go. Um, and there you go, new, new videos are popping up here just because that's how it worked. Um, yeah, this is an old, old outro clip. All right, we're gonna move on to number four. This one, um, I, I don't remember this one being a particularly high quality. Um, GTD and Bujo, how I use or don't GTD in my Bujo. It looks like it got a lot of views very early on and has kind of petered out since then. Published in 2017. Um, I'm gonna guess that this got recommended from somebody. Let's go ahead and give it a watch. Hey there guys. It's been one or two of those weeks where like I haven't had the back before I had my baby and I used to paint my nails like every week. Uh, this was the um, the Pocket Plus that I got from Chic Sparrow. I bought that and the red pocket size at the same time. Um, this one I ended up selling because it just felt way too chunky. It was like literally, you know, this wide. Um, and I just didn't need that much space in the cover, so I ended up reselling it. I don't know, inclination or energy to, to look at my to-do list too much. Um, so like, I haven't been using my bullet journal on the weekends. I never put the header in for last Friday. <laughs> I just realized that. Um, but I'm still plugging away and it's all, it's all okay. Um, most of the things I have to do are small, so it shouldn't be, take me too long to catch up. But um, today's video is another one of the- I don't know why I started the video with all of that. Like this one has a specific purpose. So this isn't just like a flip through and I don't know why I started the video by saying, eh, I'm not really using my- Like that's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of how that's changed since I first started using it until now a month and a half later. I, I do still use some GTD elements. It definitely influenced my planning style. Um, I, I got one comment once about how much I talk with my hands in the head top down shots. And uh, yeah, I can't stop thinking about that one comment every time, that one troll comment every time I watch my own videos. So um, we'll start the first thing that um, the Getting Things Done system talks about is having an inbox. I just put them straight where they belonged, whether that was in my calendar or on my weekly yeah. or sort of um, I didn't realize see that calendar that monthly again this looks busier than my calendars are these days like there's a a whole to-do list section here did I oh was that I think this was um back when I didn't like to check things off in two places still I've kind of gotten over that now. Um, I used to migrate a task from like a monthly to-do list to a weekly to-do list and to a daily to-do list and check it off only in the one place where it got done and everywhere else it would be marked as migrated. So I wouldn't have to go back and check it off in multiple places, which I kind of like the idea of, but I don't really do it that way anymore. I kind of just like the endorphin kick of getting to check it off um, multiple times. 
Um, but that must be why everything has these migration arrows. It just looks, it looks really busy on here and I don't know why. Uh, like, I feel like I don't use my monthlies as much as I used to. So this is sort of a list of things that I might like to do someday. Um, and I have this sort of set up my checklist here. First of all, I've pretty much abandoned the someday maybe list, I think, because like, it just was a list of guilty things that I once thought I wanted to do and couldn't just let go of. This video could so much have benefited from a script. Tells me how often to check in. This tape, this is a side note, this tape from Target, it's a Scotch brand decorative tape. They sell at Target and it sticks really bad to the opposing Still never solved that page, problem. So just know that. Anyway, uh, this is the checklist, which is not part of the getting things done thing, but I felt like I needed uh, a place where I could remember which, where I had left things and how often I needed to go back for them. So there's like a couple things I have to check every day. I check in on these with my weekly planning because I usually sit down with my planner like in serious mode. I always end up with one of these at one time in my setup was listed as listception because it was a list of lists and I like would always forget where I keep things. I always do that. Uh, at least once a week to make out this Stuff weekly that I might task list, list, doing, but, but I don't Patreon have to feel guilty if I decide to cross it off. Or just Why am I explaining this? You know, someday maybe means it's in the name. Just never touch it because it's not priority, you know? Uh, one of the big parts of getting things done is having a projects list. And I find that um, I'm using like a whole insert here for projects. And uh, I'm using the index of that notebook as the projects list. It tells me, you know, what page I'm looking for. And then I. This index thing, I had forgotten I did that. And it's kind of makes sense, like having a projects list. A, pro a coming up projects thing. I, I might try to implement that again. Um, I'm not in bound books like this anymore, um, but I could still totally do that. I also have sort of a little bit of a column here to say like what when it's due. Um, um, and that's pretty much all I had to say. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a... Uh... I just remembered. This is the planner I was in when I got pregnant with my first. I don't know. I remember my planner funk video from a few weeks ago where I was like two on top of things. Well, this is the one where I uh, am sort of not on top of things and sort of not touching uh, my planner for like an entire day. And then here, like Tuesday, my first to do list is that stuff because I didn't get anything done from Monday. But you know what I'm going to say, right? That's what the bullet journal system's for. It's for Oh, if I only knew how much more of a planner funk first trimester puts you in. Or, you know, finding, uh, or for using what you have, the resources you have, and not getting down on yourself uh, when things get a little bit busy, because you can just skip the whole weekend in here and pick up the next day with your next to-do list, and no space has been wasted, everything uh, can just pick up where it left off. Video number three, the Alistair Method. This one was like a dark horse that popped up when you see it had a couple like subscribers watched at the beginning and then it was pretty dead and then it started suddenly getting recommended on a boho berry video because she started using it the the Alistair method itself um and this showed up as people's recommended on that video and it had quite a vogue I was getting like 100 views a day for a little while and then a couple months later it petered out and now it's been down to almost nothing. Um, you see there's five views in the last two days. I think at least two of those are me. So it's still though my number three most watched video ever and you can see it's got me a hundred subscribers. Welcome back to another video. Okay. Terrible audio. <laughs> Hello, it's a real Thursday video. Um, today I'm going to be talking I about something know. that I'm... Did I not know all these years later that there's a false start that didn't get cut out of this? And people still watched it. I've been meaning to do a video on for a long time and it's the Alistair Metal Works. And then I will show you how I actually use it um, in my day-to-day -day planning. This one's going to be painful for me again because I have basically condensed everything that I said in this video, I think, into a short that I published like last year. Um, 
it, this is going to be really wordy and annoying. Plus, the audio is terrible. Oh, man. So, first of all, the idea of the future log, like, originally what you would do in, like, the, the video that, um, that writer Carol put, uh, put up that shows you how to do you know, just the basic bullet journal system, you would make your future log look something like this. <laughs> You'd probably want to put this on, like, the 10th of February, and then you put a dot in that column. Okay, I have to change. You know, I think I did that once. I put a dentist appointment 4 p.m. and a month, and I forgot to say what day it was on, like in my actual planning. I had to call and ask. So I write out all of the different things that I have to do during the week, and then I put a dot on the day of the day I'd like to try to get it done. I don't know if I mentioned it in this video or not, but people sometimes call this a rolling weekly, and I don't know why. <laughs> but I don't know if I get credit or something, but I've been using it like this since July of 2016. Um, and I I don't know. That was before I heard the term rolling weekly for this. Um, I, I just call them Alistair Weeks. A lot of people will call them running task, list, running task lists, and I don't no, why exactly? But there you go. If you hear people talk about that, take a look. They might be doing the same kind of a system. I've been doing this since the very first month that I was in that um, Moleskine journal. Uh, actually, I'll show you that. I started this journal in July with a normal future log. I started this journal in July of 2016. Say June. So here we go. I did this sort of. There you go, Monday, Tuesday. See, told you. Came from, um, I am going to link below the article that Alistair Johnson himself po uh, posted on the bulletjournal.com blog. I was just looking at the analytics and this bit at the end where I do a very long-winded, minute-long outro uh, is where people stop watching, just like me. Um, so you can find out a little bit about it. All right, now things are getting good. We are down to video number two. Uh, of all time, 24,000 views. This is rebuilding my Bujo system in a traveler's, or in a, sorry, field notes insert. I was really proud of this. It looks like it had sort of a peak and has been kind of petering, but it's been doing okay. It's gotten 19 views in the last two days, and I think only one of those is from me. Um, it's kind of evergreen content, even though it was about a specific time. Um, it's gotten me 86 subscribers and 23 bucks. Um, but this was, well, I guess you'll see, this was when I had to basically go back to basics because I didn't have time to decorate my January or set up my new traveler's notebook for the new year and I ran out of space, so I just sort of did everything in one place. Uh, again, first trimester kicks your butt. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm go just going to be going through this one little insert. You guys hear that? There's like a hum. It's probably going to be there for the whole video. Um, this is a field notes insert grid uh, paper that I used between January 1st and February 18th, 2018. So that period of time, um, basically like in December, I planned to, you know, set up my January bujo just like everybody else. But, uh, you know, December can often be busy. I didn't get a chance to. Um, also, the week between Christmas know one of these years I really should just set up my planner in advance like I never have time to do it in December for January but I always feel like if I do it in like November that I'm gonna want to move into it early or something or else get sick of it before I even start using it I don't know if that's true I have a hard time waiting when something's set up uh, but as it is like this year I didn't even start setting up my January until mid January. I don't know. It. I don't have to be like everyone else. It's fine. This and New Year's, I spent out of town, um, helping my grandma move. I also got a car, and this is just going to be sort of a flip through of what this sort of interim transitional um, rebuilding period of time looked like. So like, this two minute intro does not sell this video well. <laughs> to new people who don't know who I am or know what's going on. It is, does not make any sense even to me like four years later.
let's begin. Kinds of things. Basically, I started working on this like as we were coming back from Arizona helping my Does anyone else do this where um, if something gets done by someone else on your to-do list, I cross it off and then I put a note to like who did it. I don't know. Everyone else probably does that too because it's pretty basic, but it's nice. My grandma move. Um, I knew that we were going to be moving into the new house and I had things to and then meal planning, moved into a new place and have our own kitchen, doing our own meal planning. So it just sort of is, uh, I pretty quickly learned that like, yeah, this video was when we had first bought our house. We have now since sold that house and moved, we're in an apartment now, and I feel like way more of an adult than I did five years ago when we had just moved into our own place. Previously, we'd been living with my in-laws. Previous to that, I had been in an apartment by myself and no husband and like, you know, eating junk food. So come a long way since then. You know how it is like when you learn to cook for one or two after cooking for a lot of people? Um, like when I cooked for just myself, I kept things really, really basic. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more like actual recipes with uh, me and my husband, but we don't need like a full six person serving. So are eating a lot of leftovers. <laughs> this is a list of sort of meal ideas. I went through, I sat down and I just kind of wrote down the names of different things that I know how to make um, in different, like this is beef, pork, chicken, fish, and vegetarian options. This has all evolved also, and I'm actually working right now on a new insert of like a meal list insert of how to sort of streamline my meal planning from the list of things we make a lot through a grocery list to my meal schedule. Um, and I will be sharing more of that as it evolves, so subscribe. I use this page and I reference back to it. You'll see it still has a sticky note here because I want to move it to another collection elsewhere in my uh, travel journal. This uh, has been moved to another place in my bullet journal because I'm not done with it yet. This is a. I need to take a screenshot of this to use as inspiration for. I need to do this again <laughs> before our USPS boarding expires. List of places where I needed to change my mailing. Here's my YouTube schedule and video ideas. This has been expanded to like a two page spread and an index page uh, in my other setup. It has now been expanded to a whole Asana thingy with like multiple subtasks and uh, I would link to it, but I know all of those iCards are claimed already, but uh, yeah, it's, it's way more elaborate now. And I only make one long form video a week which, yeah, I, I've seen, showed you that in the other video. Um, basically, I just needed something in the interim. And while I was using this for everything before I had a dedicated short term collections insert, I used that my new ones. Um, so up like till the very end of January, I was only using really basic setups. And it worked really well because I mean, the focus of that month was moving into a new house. And I needed something really basic so that I wasn't getting distracted. I mean, I didn't even have a desk for most of it, you know? This is ringing so many bells because um, this current planner, I also set up right after moving house. Um, and yeah, it took, it probably was at least those, yeah, three weeks probably. It was like the beginning of January when we moved. It was like exactly five years. It's crazy. So I uh, yeah, just needed something really bare bones and practical. Um, and then once I finally felt like I had some, you know, my feet underneath me um, and a little bit better of a grasp on my, you know, chores and things, uh, I felt like I had a little bit of time to just put a little washi tape, make my pages just a little prettier and color coordinated. Um, so on this side, I have my video production schedule and this side is my to-do list. You know what I suddenly can't remember? is how I was storing my washi tape back then before I got this desk with the drawers, like before we moved into the house and got these drawers, because it must've been an incredible mess. This is the Alistair method, which I've talked about before. And then dailies, uh, this particular week I set aside- <gasps> Oh, the washi tape. It's like, it's sweet that like I was putting in an effort, but it looks 
so juvenile. I do not care for these colors. Space for my dailies beforehand. In, in fact, I don't think I have either of these washi tapes anymore. I just didn't like them. Um, I have not done that since. I don't do that a lot. I guess it was just sort of a whim and I went with it. So then we have, yeah, Monday through Thursday here, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday are just to-do lists. Because what I kind of had was like stuff that I needed to do after work in order here and then other things here, if that makes sense. Um, and then I had meals and groceries here. So instead of having like a meal per day, I just made a checklist of like, all right, I'll prep enough for four meals and then um, I'll check them off once I've made those and then I'll know what meals I have the ingredients for that I've done the shopping for that are available and decide the day of. And then I- That's how I do it now, basically. Put what the meal was like at the top of the daily, like the night before. And then this spread I never did anything with. <laughs> These are um, the shape of the drawers in my desk and I was gonna fill these was sort of a, a layout. I was going to make little boxes, uh, like origami boxes, kind of to um, organize the drawer. And I'd still like to do that, but I think it's going to be like a weekend sometime, some mythical time when I have a free weekend, I'll get around to that. Um, but I did not have time to make that map uh, before. It really doesn't make sense to do it that way. Like you'd have to sit there and measure everything. Much easier to just go in with your boxes and your little you know, dividers and your stuff and just figure out where it fits. I, I'm not going to end up using this spread because I'm done with this insert. Let's see, uh, then it was the week I was working on my podcast for myhogwarts.com. Um, so I was doing an interview and I put some interview questions. I stuck around with my Hogwarts for, I, I want to say maybe a year after my first daughter was born. Um, giving it quite a lot of my time and attention until I finally decided that something had to give. Um, and uh, I don't really log in anymore. Every so often I'll go check in and say hi. Then this is sort of a list of instead of things to do generally, it was specifically things around the house that I wanted to work on. These are some measurements for the uh, bay window in the front because I want, still want to try to make cushions for that. <laughs> that never happened. And then here's another weekly. This is kind of what the weeklies look like for the rest of the month, or the rest of this insert. We have a uh, video production. This is the podcast production. And then these are extra videos that if I had time to do, which it looks like I did. And then general to-do list and dailies, all pretty much similar. Oh. You know, I think that's a, a common theme in my planning is that uh, when I'm the busiest, in life is when I start to plan out my content filming and stuff the most. Uh, Cause that's the thing that hangs over me. Like it's got these invisible deadlines that only I can see. Um, and I really need to write them down so that I can see them clearly. Oh yeah. So I was doing these brown headers for this whole week. And then on the weekend, um, I, I think I wrote Friday here or something. I had to white it out and write over it. And so I knew if I used the brown highlighter, it would look funny um, over the, the white out. So I decided not to use the white out and I used the silver uniball signal to just make some little decorative dots. And I did that for the weekend and it doesn't match and I don't care. Mm -hmm. And then here we go. Pretty. I'm using a tracker here. I started tracking just some yeah. general things. Uh, we started at Bible study again, so I to work on homework. I'm trying to make some habits of doing my stretches for my neck that my chiropractor suggests, um, and putting on lotion every night because the weather's really dry. And then this is what the meal plan looks like down here. It's Monday through Friday um, because I guess I knew that I w didn't need uh, to have anything planned for the weekend or that I would have leftovers. General to dos needed to run over into a second column. And then, yeah, dailies. This is sort of a timeline for the evening, but this evening kind of got derailed by um, my mother-in-law was the victim of a crime and that kind of... I was just looking at that. I think she was finally convicted. Yeah, my mother-in-law got mugged. That was, yeah, five years ago. I messed up that whole afternoon. <laughs> Forget that. Uh, then... 
we needed to pack and stuff because we were going to a retreat on the weekend. Uh, so instead of having like a to-do list, because I knew that I wouldn't have anything like to do, I just kind of wrote out the uh, timeline. I didn't end up really using this because we had this timeline also in the folder that we were given as part. <laughs> Did you hear that? That was my, uh, what was that my, no, it wasn't a text notification. I think it was a normal notification. I used to have silly notification sounds on my phone. And I had forgotten that, yeah, I, w I still was teaching confirmation when I was pregnant. I stopped the year uh, that we had the baby and my husband taught by himself for a year and then he stopped too. Part of like leading the retreat, but kind of going through it beforehand um, and writing. And this retreat was when we finally told our students we were pregnant. It was 20 weeks. I had just had my anatomy scan um, and found out that I had a fibroid because it showed up in like a report that I got online, but my doctor never mentioned anything about it. And so I was like all worried about if it meant something important. It doesn't. It was fine. It was totally benign and everything. Um, but one of the students actually found a way to ask the are you pregnant question politely. She said, so are you kids? Are you guys ever thinking about having kids? Because, you know, they all knew that we were married. Um, but I had just been like uh, playing chicken with them because I kind of thought it was funny to see if they would ever ask. And uh, she figured out a way to do it. And so it became common knowledge, so, you know, through the grapevine after that. Getting it all out kind of jogged my memory and got me really prepared. So I like I kind of knew what was coming up. I had a better idea of what the schedule was going to be. So that worked for me. Here's a nice monochrome uh, using my gray all of these um, markers that I'm using here, like for my headers and stuff, are the zebra model liners, and I love the gray one. These were new then, like to me, and uh, yeah, I haven't had the gray one in a long time. It, it dried out. I use it so much. Uh, that's the meal plan there, and then my tracker and my to-do list. Dailies all look the same, as you see. And then the very last weekend, I had just events up here for Saturday, Sunday, and a general to-do list for the whole weekend. And then that is the whole hectic, and I'm really glad I had it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this... Yeah, I was really proud of this, like, as one of the interludes in my planner journey, this particular insert, um, it, it taught me a lot about my planner style um, and just the ability to go down to basics of just, like, one pen and one book um, and plan really effectively through a really tumultuous... Um, part of my life and uh you know it's just a lot going on and it worked out really well so i'm pretty proud of this and um, i'm really glad that it showed up it's the number two video on my channel this was interesting or useful for you um don't forget to subscribe if it was because i post videos three times a week and i hope to see you in the next one have a good day guys bye did you catch that three times a week i used to do sims videos on my channel And finally, the number one video on my channel of all time, Friction Hacks, five friction hacks and three tips. This video, oh my gosh, I am going to cringe. 14 minutes of uh, terrible audio. And this is my old desk before we moved into the new house. All these videos are very old. Um, You'll see. Anyway, let's take a look here. It's got 37,000, they're almost 38,000 views. It's gotten me 130 subscribers and 70 bucks. Um, it's gotten 11 views in the last two days, only one of which I think was me. Um, it looks like it had a heyday in, from like 2018, 2019, and it's kind of decreased since then, but it's still holding real strong. Um, you know, in the, the teens of video, uh, of views, sometimes um you see it's done it's done okay um it's gotten a lot of if i look at the analytics a lot of traffic from searches for rocket books which i think is one of those like erasable notebooks that's like maybe it's the one you throw in the microwave i don't know um but people want to be able to get rid of the things they write down and so they end up here it's also gotten a lot of traffic from a video called like why i stopped using friction pens <laughs> um I stand by everything I say in the video. It's just not presented well. Um, and so I actually, 
I remade this video and no one watches the remake. <laughs> I thought I could replace it, but no. Hey guys, uh, it's been a heck of a week and I've been too lazy to redo my nails even though one of them has been bitten off by a terrible monster. Uh, too lazy to do a uh, front facing intro for this so just wanted to say hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is a video about- I guess the lesson I will take from this on the silver lining is that um, if you feel like you are not in the perfect headspace and the perfect uh, situation to do the thing, just do the thing anyway. Like, I, another case in point, this video I have been procrastinating on for a couple of weeks now, um, but I finally just sat down and did it. I didn't even commit to doing the whole thing. I said, I will react to one video, and then we'll see where it goes from there. And here I am on number five, powering through. You, I might not have been able to edit out every single yawn because it's getting late, but we're doing good. So we just, we plug along, we do the thing, and it might just end up being your most viewed video of all time. Friction pens. Um, I know that they're a little bit, uh, not controversial, but some people really love them, some people really hate them. Uh, polarizing. We'll say they're polarizing. Some people just don't see the point, but I'm going to try to show you the point today. Today's video includes five friction hacks that you can use with your Bujo, and three friction uh, handy tips to get you started when you're new to the pens or if you just need to know stuff. You know how some people play it fast and loose with the term hack? Well, basically the first thing that would be a really useful reason to use friction pens for your planning, and the reason that I think a lot of people really are drawn to it, is just the fact that you can erase stuff and uh, in, you know, in your daily planning and replace it. Like if your plans change, but they change early enough that it's not like a disruption to your day, just, you know, erase the thing and rewrite it. Or maybe you misspell something. The ability to re erase stuff is, you know, it's a really great uh, feature that, you know, the other option is having a pencil, which there's just something a lot nicer about a gel pen and it really does erase very cleanly. For example, look at that. Oh no, there's a mistake on my page. <laughs> Let me just erase it like that. I can barely even tell it was there. But where the friction pens really start to shine in planning is being able to reuse one spread multiple times. You know, I, I take back everything I said. This is actually edited okay. The audio is not great and all of that banging around at the very first bit. The intro, I need to pare down my intros. That's what I'm learning today. But I, I chopped this up. I cut this real nicely. It's not badly edited. This is my example. I'm showing you my recurring tasks uh, list. And basically I write here the last time I did something. Um, one of these, you know, recurring tasks every so often. Um, and every time I do them, I'll write down the next time in my future log. But then the last time I'll erase the date and write in the new date so that I always know the last time I Friction don't just come in the standard pen. This is a clicker. This one's actually an 05. This one's a- I probably should have put numbers somewhere in the middle of this video because I have lost count. 07. Um, they also come in these fun markers, which are fine point markers, but much bolder than the pen. And then also they come in highlighters. I only have one highlighter, uh, personally, I bought it separately, but they come in, I believe, four or five packs. There's this pastel pack and then a brights pack. Of in the uh, updated video, I also shared that I got the fine liners and I use them as sometimes. You know, normal highlighter colors. And it's really great. Um, because, you know, you can highlight things and if you highlight the wrong part, you can erase it or if you don't need something highlighted anymore, you do it. So, uh, I use certain pens that I don't want erased, like the border of this one as well, is a, um, Pigma Micron. And then this, I really liked this tracker. I never finished it because it was very ambitiously huge. But the idea was that, like, I would get credit for doing all of these different things. And then I don't remember what I was saving up for. I probably should have been saving it for something. Um, it was, I, I saw it as like a bubblegum machine on Instagram. Someone was filling up bubblegum balls and basically it was like a 
quantity thing and you just like an achievement and then you could save up for something but it was a really great way to ha- have like a habit tracker that didn't uh punish you for not doing something on a specific day it only rewarded you for getting stuff done just in bulk like whenever you brushed your teeth you got a point regardless of even if you skipped a day or whatever your habit is you know um i liked that idea I use my friction pens all over my planner because I think it's really handy and I very appreciate uh, having the option to erase things if I need to because life changes and my planner can change with it. So uh, sorry about if that was kind of rambly but and sorry that uh, I haven't bothered to do anything nice to my nails for a while and it's all good. Same same rambly and haven't done my nails though today I filed them so you can appreciate that and also I was going to paint them but instead I filmed this video so um yeah I hope you guys enjoyed that I think that's the end um thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers I hope that all 2,000 of you watched this video to the end so that I can thank you myself um and if you are not one of those 2,000, then please join along. Um, like I said, we post videos once a week here nowadays. Um, we have a new intro, and we don't use background music as often. But let me know in the comments if you think my video quality has improved at all. I'm honestly not sure that it has, because most weeks I'm just out here to try to get the video done on time. And uh, a lot of times that means that the audio isn't great, the lighting isn't great, though I put in an effort today. Can you see? I've got like a key and everything. Is that what that was called? I don't know. Um, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, this little throwback. Thanks again, um, and I will see you guys in the next video next Thursday. Have a productive day. Bye.